Hi everybody, my name's Bob Saunders, or, or Saunders, as I'm supposed to say it, and I'd like to talk to you today about this concept that we're all supposed to have, or some of us are supposed to have, 12 strands of DNA in the future. Now, for those old lags who know what we're all talking about, please bear with me, because for those, the new boys, I'd, people who haven't seen my videos or other videos on the subject, I'd like to try and explain a little bit about it. At the moment, we've all got two strands of DNA. And it is supposed that in the future, we're going to incorporate more strands of DNA until ultimately we'll have 12 strands. When they say strands, I suppose they mean pairs because DNA is always a pair. So you'd have 12 pairs if this concept was right, 24 strands. Anyway, that's the concept. And I beg to differ a little bit because I've been told something, <laughs> as is usually the case, a bit different. And I'd like to explain what my guides have said about this concept of 12 strands of DNA. Now, before we start with the with what I, I want to say, I would just like to read to you something from a book that my guides gave me or dictated to me by what you would know as channeling some 30 years ago. And they mentioned about DNA. And I'd like to read a bit of it, just a short paragraph. It says, We are accustomed to observe within the structure of any living thing a series of molecules termed DNA and RNA. We are informed that they are basically sugar in content and form the building blocks, the blueprint for that object. Th that object could be a plant, it could be a, it could be a, a, an animal, it could be a person, whatever. We nod our heads sagely and turn away just as mystified to comprehend how, if the DNA of one object appears basically ideal, actually, I, I, they were using the word plant, because they were talking about plants, and I've, I've cocked it up a little bit because I've made it more complicated. Let me read this bit again, and then we'll go on, because they're talking about plants. We nod our heads sagely and turn away, just as mystified to comprehend how, if the DNA of one plant appears basically identical to that of another, then how does the plant know that it is a daffodil or a rose or indeed a horse or a human? We will not find the answer by examining the molecules observable in a physical realm. That which is observed is merely the end product of a complex interplay of forces manipulated by those archangels who control the nature of all life. The real action is taking place in areas far removed from the aegis of the naked eye. Okay, now, what they're trying to say is that if you take a blood sample from a person, take a blood sample from a cow, a monkey, and then a number of other creatures, I mean, like snails and things, I'm not too sure, but there's some things that are very, very similar to us. Uh, you'd be hard pushed to see very much difference. And yet there's obviously a vast difference between us and like a snail or whatever, you know, or a mouse or whatever it might be. Now, that is because um, the, the end product, the, the physical bit of it, is um, only a minute plant, a, a minute part, excuse me, of the real thing. The real thing is all happening in etheric and astral realms. Now, once again, for those who are a bit new to this, this let me tell you how a human is made. We start off as a tiny point of life made by God. That tiny point of life is without any um, any form. It's, it's, it doesn't know what it's going to be. It's just a point of life, that's all. Then an archangel takes it and gives it a stamp 
that tells it that it's going to be a something. It's going to be a raindrop, it's going to be a horse, it's going to be a snail, it's going to be a great grain of, of grass, a, a, it's <laughs> anything you like, okay, or a human in our case. And a grain of sand was what I was looking for, excuse me, <laughs> or, or a human in our case. Now, let's continue with that with us humans. Once it has been decided that we're going to be humans, we come down from the heavenly spheres in a series of stages, stopping every now and again in certain planets, and we receive information from those areas that actually form what we call the auras. These planets come down with us and form what we call auras. And we finally, and this is the important point because this is really what I want to talk to you about, we finally get to a staging post that we call the signs of the zodiac. Now, I wrote them down because I'm not very good with all this stuff. So we call these signs of the zodiac Aries, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Sagittarius, Aquarius, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn or Pisces. Now, the reason that these 12 staging posts are being given different names is because each one of those 12 staging posts is imbued with a particular teaching aspect which will teach a part of a total personality. Now, what I'm saying about that is that you will be you will learn on one of those staging posts to be um how can i say it's a bit difficult to explain to, to absorb the personality of that area let me explain in my case i'm pisces and quite simply a piscean person generally is someone who's fairly retiring he loves nature he loves mysterious things he loves music he loves art and that sort of thing um, I, I don't know, uh, somebody who might be Leo would be perhaps a more aggressive, dynamic sort of person. You understand what I'm saying? They've got different bits of personality because we can't absorb them all because if a very retiring, shy person uh, was also given the personality, a second personality from, from another sign of the Zodiac that was very aggressive, competitive, uh, soldier sort of person, the poor sword would go, poor, poor person, would, would go crazy because he wouldn't be able to cope with being very retiring and very aggressive at the same time. So we're given just one twelfth of the total personality. And we know that as the signs of the zodiac. Now, this is the thing, that since 2012, uh, a change has come to the planet and it's gradually increasing and it's a spiritual change. Some of you may have noticed it, some of you may have not, but it's there. Spiritual energy is being poured into the planet and is being poured into us. Now this will gradually, for those who take advantage of that spirituality and develop their spirituality, this will give them the chance to absorb more than one personality. Now, this can only be done in little stages. You can't absorb all 12 personalities at once. It, you, you, you go mad. So, for instance, talking about me again, Pisces, I just described how I am, and I know my wife is Aquarius, and I notice that her personality is not that different from me. She also loves art. She also loves nature and beauty and things like that. So our personalities are not that different, and it might be possible for me to incorporate uh, Aries. No, what did, what did I say? Aquarius. Aquarius. My wife is Aquarius. It might be possible for me to absorb Aquarius into my Piscean personality because they're not that far apart. And presumably she, she could do the same. And any other people that are on the spiritual path that are like that could do the same. Now, so, so it might be possible 
for me to absorb two personalities and still keep my feet on the ground, be able to cope with that. Now, eventually, maybe I can absorb a third one and then maybe a fourth one. I'm talking about me, and I'm sorry to talk about me, but um, the same applies to you, obviously. I, th I hope you've understood that. And you, you will be able gradually to absorb different personalities until eventually, with a bit of luck, you will have all 12 signs of the zodiac incorporated into you. Now, when that happens, something, I suppose we could call it a gestalt, which means the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Something happens and creates, because those of you who followed the 12 strand, uh, the 12 strand of DNA complex uh, uh, concept will have noticed that people talk about a 13th thing and wonder what that is. Well, quite simply, if somebody can absorb 12, all these 12 aspects of personality, that will change that person forever and make him a different person. And that is that 13th person, if you like. He becomes a different person. So that's the 13th aspect. So I'll quickly go over it again. The 12 strands of the DNA have got nothing to do with your physical DNA. That is not going to move. You're not going to be able to take a blood sample and find endless strands of DNA in it. It's not going to happen. What is going to happen, for those who can do it, is they're going to be able to absorb different parts of the total personality. This Aries, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Sagitt all that. They're going to gradually be able to incorporate them into their own personality and handle it and become better, wiser people. And then, finally, when they've got all the 12 aspects in place, that will totally change them and it will make them into a different person that we call this 13th aspect of it. Now, just before I finish, I j it just crossed my mind that if you read the Bible about J Jesus and the 12 disciples, there might be a link there somewhere. Because I don't, uh, Jesus was obviously a real person, but. In the, Bi in, the Bi <laughs> in the Bible, they're often talking about him in an allegorical sense. And I'm just wondering if Jesus and the 12 disciples is not, was not taken from this concept that the disciples represent each one a part of the signs of the zodiac and Jesus represents that combination to make the perfect person. I don't know. Think about it. Tell me what you think. Okay, now, it's a weird concept if you're just used to the, the idea of eventually you'll have more and more strands of DNA in your blood samples. That's not going to happen. It's going to happen as I've described. And it, if it's new to you, it may be a bit difficult to comprehend. But please tell me what you think and we'll discuss it. Okay. So, I'll speak to you later on another subject, okay? Bye. Thank you for listening to me.